Hey everyone, my name is Ryan and welcome to another Reality Kit tutorial. Today we're going to learn about the non-AR mode in Reality Kit. The non-AR mode allows us to use a perspective camera, which is really a virtual camera instead of using the physical device camera, to create a virtual 3D space using Reality Kit. Let's get started. Okay, so I've created an outline in Swift Playgrounds on my iPad Pro. Um, you can use this in you know, Xcode as well, you just have to make some adjustments, but I'm gonna use Swift Playgrounds. So there are seven steps, um, and we're gonna go through each of them, and then if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna import our frameworks. Import Playground Support. And we're going to import reality kit those are the only two frameworks that we're going to use in this tutorial next we're going to configure our ar view so we're going to create a new instance of an ar view and we are going to use the constructor let's see that allows us to specify a frame a camera mode and whether we want to automatically configure the session we're going to say dot zero because we want the playground to set the, the frame size and in this case, usually if you do an AR session or like an, an AR experience, you would select .AR. In this case, we're going to select the other option, which is a non-AR. Um, and this is how you essentially configure a reality kit session that doesn't use the physical device camera, but really simulates a 3D environment. And we're going to set it to automatically configure. So that's how you configure the AR view. Next, we're going to create a point light because now that we're not using the physical world, we need lighting to be able to see our objects. And so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to uh, create a new instance of a point light. So we're going to say let point light, oops, point light, let's create a new one. And then we're going to set the intensity to 10,000. Um, I believe it starts at a hundred or a thousand, um, but I, I saw in you know in creating this tutorial that ten thousand was bright enough, and so we're gonna say point light dot light dot intensity equals ten thousand. Next, we're gonna create an anchor to attach this light to, and so let's do that right now. So we're gonna say let light anchor equals anchor entity, and in this case, we're gonna use uh this one right we're going to use a constructor that allows us to specify world coordinates as a vector with three elements the xyz elements and so we're going to set this at zero comma zero comma zero and then we're going to add the light to the anchor so light anchor let add and we're going to add our point light and not to forget that we now have to add our anchor to our scene, otherwise it won't be visible. So we're gonna say arview.scene.add, and we are going to add our light anchor. Okay, great. So now we've created our point light, we set the intensity of it, we set the location of it, and we added it to our scene. The next step is we're gonna create a plane that is at ground level to simulate a floor. And so what we're gonna do is we are going to create a uh, plane mesh which is gonna be a mesh resource dot generate plane. Let's see, where is it? I think generate. So, and there's, there's really two options. We're gonna see which one works best. One of them will be on its side and the other one will, so there's really two ways. There's a width and a depth you specify and a width and a height. I think I'm gonna use the one with the depth and we're gonna see if it's at the right orientation. Um, if it's not, we'll just use the other one. Or you can also rotate the plane itself. Uh, next, we're gonna create, uh, let's see, a material too. So let plane material, simple material, and in, as in our material, I can't type today, um, as in our instructions we're going to make this white with a roughness of 0 0.5 and we're going to set the metallic uh, property of this plane to true and so we're going to do exactly this one we're going to say white oops, roughness 0 0.5 and we're going to make it metallic now that we have our mesh and our material we can create a plane entity and so we're going to create a model entity 
equals model entity. And we're going to use a constructor that allows us to provide a mesh and an array of materials. We're going to say plain mesh. And we are going to enter an array of just one material, in this case, a plain material. Next, we can add a plain anchor. And again, we're going to use our anchor entity constructor that allows us to provide a vector or a position in the world space. And so this one is also going to be at 0, 0, 0. And as usual, you add the plane to the anchor and then add the anchor to the scene. Oh, no. This, I'm going to rename this to plain entity. I don't know why I wrote model entity. This should be plain entity. And that way, you know, we can keep it consistent uh, with our naming scheme. And so we're going to say plain entity. And then we're going to add our plain anchor to the scene. Okay. So now we've configured our air view. We've created a point light. We've also created a ground level plane. Um, and next, we're going to create a sphere that is floating in, the, uh, in space, just so we can have multiple objects in the scene so you can see how it is rendered. OK, so let's create our sphere now. We're going to create a sphere mesh equals uh, mesh resource dot generate sphere. And we're going to do a radius of 1.5 meters. And then we're going to create a simple material with a light blue color. And let's see. Yep. Yeah. So we're going to make this cyan. And then we're going to do 0.5 F rough, roughness. And we're going to make this metallic again. Um, now we're going to create the entity. So we're going to create a sphere entity which is a model entity. And we're going to specify two properties, the mesh sphere, mesh. And then as a material, we are going to make it a sphere material. OK, great. Now we're going to create again an anchor. So you can see that this is pretty repetitive, but this is good for practice that you really get to understand. You know, you create the mesh, you create the material, you create the entity or the model entity. You create the anchor, you add the, the model entity to the anchor, and then you add the anchor to the scene. There's a very common and very, you know, you'll use this very often when you're creating objects in reality kit. So it's very important to know. Um, and then we are going to create a sphere anchor. And in this case, we're not going to put it at zero, zero. We're going to put it at zero to minus five. Um, this will be in front of us. So then we're going to do a world vector again, and we're going to say 0, 2, minus 5. Great. OK, and then we're going to add our sphere to our anchor. So we're going to say sphere anchor dot add child. And we're going to say sphere entity. And then we're, obviously, we're going to add our sphere anchor to our scene. We're almost done. We have two more steps to go. OK, so now that we've added the objects and the lights in the scene, um, from my experience, uh, ReautoKit doesn't automatically add a camera for you, even though you set the configuration session to be automatically configured. So as you remember, in step two, we set it to be true. But for some reason, it didn't create a perspective camera automatically. So I'm creating this um, myself. And so the way to do that is we're going to create a new camera equals perspective camera. And once we have our perspective camera, we are going to create a camera anchor. That is at a world position of 0, 1, 1. And then we're going to add our camera to the anchor. And then we're going to add our an camera anchor to the scene. So we're going to AR view dot scene add anchor. 
And then finally, we have one more thing left to do is we're going to have to set the AR view to the live view of the playground. Otherwise, nothing will show because it doesn't have a, a view to display. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say playground page dot current set live view and we are going to set our AR view. And even though I call this an AR view, this is really a virtual view. So if you want to rename it, you could. Um, but this is, you know, this uses a perspective camera instead of your physical device camera, um, you know, on your iPhone or iPad. So what we're going to do is we're going to press run. And what you'll see, hopefully, is a virtual scene. And there we go. So I'm going to make this bigger. And this is what it looks like. And that is how you create your very own virtual 3D scene using Reality Kit. As you've now learned, Reality Kit is more than an AR framework. It can also be used as a 3D rendering framework for virtual scenes. If you have any questions about what I showed in this tutorial, feel free to leave a comment down below. Like and subscribe for more Reality Kit tutorials.